Some people can just, you know, let things blow off their shoulder. And just deal with what they have to deal with and, and just not let it bother them. Uh, I'm not one of those people. I really had to work hard on this issue. And there, there's a line between having high expectations of yourself and just relentlessly beating the hell out of yourself. And if you don't know where that line is, uh, it's hurting you a lot. It's hurting your pool game. So that's the basic subject of this video. We're going to get down on it as soon as I put air in this tractor tire. Peace, thanks for tuning in. Let's roll the bean footage, man. Let's take a look. There's the one, there's the two, there's the three, there's the four, the five, the six, the seven, the eight, and there's the nine. There's a tiny bit of a left hand cut on this one ball. It's almost straight in, but it's not. Um, so if you draw it straight back, it should come up a little bit to the right side of that 8-ball and not get right behind the 8-ball. So let's take a look at the 2-ball line and note where the 3 and the 4 are. And where do you have to be on the 3 to get back on that 4-ball? Is it safe to get on that 2-ball line, that blue line going through the 2-ball? To get on the 3 and then back on the 4? And the answer is, yeah, that would be perfect to get on the two ball. But you're going to have to be careful because you don't want to go below that two ball line. That's going to give you a terrible angle to get on the three in the right position to get back on the four. So you want to stay above that two ball line. It's, it's not worth it to get right on the, or to try to get right on the line because it's real easy to go too long here. You would rather go too short than too long. So even though staying above that line leaves you a, not a great angle on the two ball and the cue ball is going to go into the seven ball, if you don't get on the line, it's really not worth the risk of going below the line. So shoot it a little bit softer than you normally would and just be really really careful this is the key shot right from the one all right i came up way short of that two ball line and now i have a really serious problem here like i said if you come up too short of that two ball line you're going into the seven ball and the shorter you come up the more you're going into the seven you're gonna have to take a really good look at the tangent line off the two ball and see exactly where that cue ball is going to hit that seven will the cue ball drive the seven ball hard into the rail or soft into the rail it's a little bit tricky. You could easily get snookered behind this 7-ball, so you're going to have to be careful.
You want to hit the seven ball as thin as humanly possible, just so it doesn't go far from where it is right now. You don't want to bounce it off that top rail and in your way for the three ball shot. So let's take a look at the three ball line. To decrease the angle of the cue ball coming off the two and into the seven, I put a little bit of top left hand English on this ball. So the agenda is to drive the cue ball into the rail and avoid driving the seven ball too hard into the rail. So let's go ahead and look at the shot. All right, that was close to disaster, but we got away with it, and we got a great angle on the three to get center table on the four. It actually like to be a little bit to the right of that four ball. Let's take a look at the four ball line and see what we got here. The reason you don't want to be straight in on the four is because from the center of the table, that's going to be a longer shot than what it looks like here. And it's going to be a little bit difficult to control a draw shot coming straight back on that five ball. So you want to use that left hand rail to kind of uh, give you more control over where that cue ball is going. As far as going back to this three ball shot, which we haven't shot yet. I'm just using a hair of right hand English just to help the speed of the natural angle coming from the three into that rail and then the opposite angle off that left hand rail. I just need a, just a little bit more speed and that's what that running English is for. Okay, I got really good on that four ball line. In fact, you can't ask for much better than that. I'm a little bit to the right of it. So let's take a look at the five ball line. And you can see that it would be okay to come up a little bit short, that just a little bit short of that five ball line. It would be it would be okay to come up straight in on that five ball line. You just don't want to go too far to the right of that five ball line because you're going to have a lot of trouble holding the cue ball on the five to get to that six. So let's roll the bean footage, homie. You know, it would have made it easier to get closer to the five ball line, but this is just basic pull here. We have a little, well, we have a left hand cut, and so the cue ball is just going to drive into that right hand round. And you just, at this point, you just have to know the speed of the table and how far you, or how hard you want to go into that rail to bounce out for a shot on the six ball to roll down for a shot on the seven ball. So let's take a look at the six ball line and decide where's the best place to be on that line to get back on the seven in order to get good shape on this eight ball. And I'm just using a little bit of right hand English here just to go a little bit further up table and a little bit closer to the six ball. You don't necessarily have to do this um, because it adds more complication into the game and now you're dealing with deflection and all that stuff. So if you're really not confident, don't use any English at all and you'll be just fine. You'll have a little bit of a longer shot on the six ball, but everything will be groovy. All right, now we're just going into that right hand rail, but you want to stay high. You want to stay up on this seven to have the correct angle to get on this eight. You don't want to get straight in on the seven, so... Don't do anything crazy and stupid here. Just bounce off that rail and you'll be two diamonds out for a seven ball shot with a perfect shot to get back on that eight ball.
straight top and just a hair of right hand English here just to keep the momentum going. And you want to shoot this softly. Don't slam this ball. Everything is good. It's all finesse for me. That's fine line on the eight ball, and we're shooting to come up a little bit short on that eight ball. We want that left hand cut to come off that left hand round back out on the nine ball. So just don't go too long. You don't want an angle on this eight ball, and you really don't want to be straight in because then you're going to have to draw back on the short side of the nine ball. So just be careful here, and it's it's just fine to come up short. You'll be fine getting back on the nine ball. Uh, once again, be careful, and from here on in, there's going to be a little bit different kind of video than you're used to. You know, it's it's kind of rare, but every now and then. I get the luxury of just shutting the hell up and allowing the video itself to speak for itself. And this is one of those moments. So from here on out, I'm just going to kind of let it roll. And I think you'll understand what's happening here. Um, peace, everybody. Jeff, welcome to the world of video production. It takes a whole lot of guts to do that. And I applaud you and everyone else who's setting out to make YouTube content. Um, really, just go with it. And, and just don't forget to have fun. That's important. And peace, everybody. Thank you for tuning in. After I run this out, we're going to roll the whole video and just put some groovy tunes in there. Bye. What, what the fuck is wrong? God, I suck at this fucking...